Hey guys, before we get into the episode here this week, I want to let you know about something we just launched over at Sawyertronmedia.com. It's our very first Kickstarter. It's Steel City Startups. It's a magazine show we want to do. Go find out about it at SteelCitySTartups.com. Back it, tell your friends, and uh, stay tuned here at Sawyertronmedia.com. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 110. We're going to talk about a lot of Android. A couple of guys in the crew got a jelly bean, and we're going to find out all about it. We're going to find out a little bit about Tout. We're going to talk about the new CEO of Yahoo, and is it really going to make a difference? All this and much more. Tasers, bro. Awesome Cast. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast number 110 live from the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. I am Michael Sorg, host of this, this, uh, whatever it's gonna be, on the couch with me as jolly as ever is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. Yep. Hand gesture off, off, uh, gesture. off screen. There you go. There you go. He's over there hanging out. Also, ready for this train wreck of a podcast is Rob De La Creta. Wearing a helmet. There. Yep. Hi. Hi. How you doing? I'm wearing a helmet. He's wearing a helmet. It's that a vintage may- helmet. It's from, uh, I think it's from 1982 or something like that. It's older than I am. 80, 82 is not vintage, though. It can be. Uh, actually, technically, in most circles, 82 is antique now. Yes, it oh, is. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So oh, really? 25 true? years. Is it 25? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 25 for an antique car or motorcycle, so. Wow. Also with yeah. us is AJ Kuftik, IT dude in North Carolina. That is correct. In the northern of the Carolinas. In the northern of the Carolinas. Not in the North Virginia. No. Oh, North no, no, Carolina. No. No. Carolina. No. <laughs> no. No. Not to no. be confused. Don't make that one. Don't. No. Yeah. Don't make that confusion happen in no. your brain. No. 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 And deep in the heart of Flair country. Either way. <laughs> and from a little bit closer is Frank Genoeth. Also hey. of InsertCoinToBegin.com. You know it. How you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing okay. Excellent, excellent. Went to the, uh, went to the casino today, won $2. Uh, nice. Cool. Wow. Nice. I'm forever going to call him Chinoit. Chinoit. <laughs> FYI. Congratulations. Yeah. All right, this is the awesome cast where we like to geek out about tech and stuff uh, online and everything that we're into. So, uh... So, uh, you know, it's probably going to get a little android in here today, so uh, if you're uh, Let's see how many fan. times we can get Rob to yell at us. Yes. Yes. I, that <laughs> yes. Is, I think I have Sorry. a few. Just the habit. No, that's for the <laughs> other show. he's wearing the helmet <laughs> because he's probably going to start bashing Sorry, his head everyone. against the wall. Yeah, there you go. He's safe, so next time I have the, hey, people are going to pay for Twitter. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. So, uh, Tumblr said they're going pay. Well, that, well, actually. <laughs> oh, well, we'll get to that. Damn we'll, it! We'll get to that, though. Uh, but in the meantime, you can check out everything about us at awesomecast.com, contact at awesomecast.com, Twitter at awesomecast. We're also on the Facebook. We're on a Google+, Plus. so go follow us and talk with us there, of course. Um, and, uh, hey, we're here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com, so you can join us here in the chat, like guys like Hot Wheels and Zero 2 k are right now. Uh, over there, and we're streaming, of course, on Ustream and Justin TV. If you, did the, your monitor just go out? I was trying to see if it was on. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. All right. I, I, it's not logged in. It's not logged no. in. I'll, I'll fix that. Okay. I'll fix that. Um, I just now thought about that because you said chat room, and I was like, and you're like, maybe I, maybe I should see the chat room. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, where's my chat room at? I was like, why can't I see my room of chat? I have no idea what my fans are saying. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, <sighs> let's kind of do it. Uh, funny, before we decide who was going to be on the show, which happened within the last 24 hours, uh, uh, bo- yes. both both of our guests this week actually submitted some stuff. So, I- I'm going to let you guys present uh, here to begin with. Um, let- let's, uh, well, well, first, let's, let's go with AJ. You got, you got one item here. Uh, Frank's got a little bit more. So, uh, uh t- tell me about this, uh, this email you sent us about, uh, episode 107. So, uh, um, I've been on vacation and away from my car, which is basically where I listen to all of my podcasts. <laughs> um, and so I, w- I actually went back and I listened to episode 107 and it came up, uh, will Tumblr or Twitter ever charge for service? And this is where Rob, uh, grumbles. Can I get a grumble, Rob? 
There we go. That's the one I'm looking for. And uh, Rob came and, and Rob grumbles, and he's right. Twitter is not going to charge for service. Tumblr is not going to charge for service. However, they could if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. And this isn't about like, a, oh, they're going to charge for everyone. Let's say you had a tumble page, and every time you tumbled, or every two times you tumbled, they threw in one of you, they threw in a tumble they threw in a tumble on your feed that had an ad, and you were reading other Tumblr pages, and and every so often there was an ad, right? Same thing that Twitter wants to do; they want to start injecting ads into your timeline. Would you pay to not see those? Hmm, isn't that kind of something that um. That feels like what WordPress is doing because WordPress is starting to push ads on their yes. .com. But if you don't, and want it makes them- me mad because I have one of those sites and I don't get a kickback for any of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't get a cut, so they're putting an ad on my content that serves no money to me, which is exactly, sad. exactly. I but- mean, I like if I did, if they listen, if they did pay me, I would get like oh, like a, a cent or two. See. But and, still, and, and especially with their fine designs that they have, like this one here we have for the Q Cat. Um, yeah, you got to be be solid with ads, um, but I, I know you're not getting a kickback. But I think it still makes sense because you're still right. paying for their service with ads. Right. So I mean, it's here's, still good. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking they go the Pandora route. You know how Pandora, you can listen to it for free, no problems. You'll just get an ad for like, I don't know, diapers or something in the middle of your. In the middle of your listening, they you know they it's just like regular radio. You listen to like four or five songs, they throw an ad in, then you listen to four or five more songs. Yeah, yeah. Just like Spotify. you can pay for a Pandora account, which I did when I uh, uh, used to work in a cubicle. Um, that got rid of those ads. The other thing that it did was it actually got rid of the listening limit. At the time, it was a forty-hour a month listening limit, so you couldn't listen to Pandora all the time. You just got stuck with that and then they removed that limit so everybody can listen for a full for you know unlimited amounts every month but they still have the ads in there so it makes it a little bit less of a proposition but for me it was 36 bucks for the year so it's like three dollars a month and i don't have any ads and i don't have to listen to anything extra than other than my music and you got i think you got more skips too yeah yeah you do although i just and and it, at the time it was unlimited um it was unlimited listening. And that made sense for me. And I was like, cool, three bucks, cool. I don't have to see ads. I've got to get all these other services. That works. And I fully believe that if you put a service out there and you were able to pay for things, the people would do it. People pay for dumb stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think there are enough people out there that don't want to see ads. I'm one of them. I hate ads. I hate commercials. I don't want the internet to become one big giant commercial network. I really don't. And, and, um, and I'm somebody that put, that uh, pays for Pandora, Pandora just just to get rid of the ads. Right. I so. I pay for Spotify to get rid of the ads, and so I can listen on my phone. Yeah. Yep. I pay. I have no qualms with it either. Now I think Spotify. Uh-huh. You you get a lot more for paying for it than Pandora does right now. Yes. If you pay Definitely. for it, you get the ability to listen online on your phone. Yeah. Versus the um, but they also limit that to the free people, so it kind of. I don't think I, I don't think you can listen on mobile with no. the free accounts. No, yeah. you can't. You have you have yeah. to have a paid account. It, it, I think yeah. you have to have the and top. They, they have the um, there's the five dollar a month and the ten dollar a month account. You have to have the ten dollar a month. And that that's an interesting Forget. limitation too. Yeah. So by the way, sorry I I died. My internet died. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's saying you have a connection problem. I do. I will. I have my my cable moment says we're right there, and I can watch it die. So that's fun. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm switching services. I'm I'm done here. All right. He doesn't have you look good. You look good. Sorry, Chachi. We didn't put you back up after I fixed that. He doesn't have a connection problem. He has a Time Warner problem. I do have a Time Warner problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna test my theory because I don't know if it's a problem with the wiring in my apartment or if it's a problem with Time Warner. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna switch services and see if the problem follows it. If it does, cool, awesome. Hate you, Time Warner. If it doesn't, really sorry, Time Warner. I, I, I don't know what happened. Sorry about the wiring in my building. Anyways, back to what we were talking about. Yes, back yeah. to what we were talking about. So um, it, I think if you charge for things like Twitter and you charge for things like uh, you know Tumblr and that sort of stuff to keep ads away, 
I think people would pay it given it was like a, a small enough fee. I would pay like two bucks a month for Twitter to not have yeah. ads. Yeah, and, and you see that a lot. No with, you see that a lot with uh, apps and stuff. There's a lot of free apps out there that um, you really pay the ninety nine cents to get rid of the annoyance of ads. I mean, oh, that's like the, uh, the Twitter client that I uh, five dollars to get rid of the ads. And since I have the free version, I I always have a little ad bar at the bottom. Yeah. If I give them a buck or two, whatever it is, then they'll take all the ads away. That's I the only difference with the paid version. I remember Twitterific was like that, and I think I ended up paying for it. Um, the Words with Friends series is like that. Yep. Uh, I guess even uh, the, the Draw Something. Well, my uh, all of the I, games it, that are out there for like iPhone and Android do that. They yeah. have ads in the free version. If you don't want to see the ads, pay for it. Exactly. And I've exactly. re- every, almost every single time I pay for it. Not exactly. even a question. I mean, exactly. what what, uh, what we're talking about is just it's the freemium model that um, everybody's kind of been following for the last five years or so. Uh, Corey Doctor from Wired has a book called Free, uh, and he talks all about how the freemium model works so well because. We went from a culture of people looking for shareware and that kind of stuff, or trial versions of things um, back in the 90, Windows 95 days, to people who are like, well, you know, like you look up, you know, an app on the App Store, and you're like, well, I don't want to spend like three bucks, but if I can use it for free, even if it's covered in ads, at least then I learn that I like it or I learn that it's useful to me, then I'll give you extra money down the line. Or... It's not ad supported. It's you know nickel and dime add-ons or whatever, and it works out better that way. So like the thing with Twitter and Tumblr is that people will absolutely pay for it um, when they realize that it's essential. Like you talk to people who use Tumblr uh, as like as their main page website business, like and they get a notification from Tumblr that says like, hey, uh, we're gonna put ads in your stuff unless you give us five dollars a month. I will pay for that for the next five years, like right on that day. Exactly, care. exactly, because I mean they've been giving it for free for so long. I mean, if Facebook, yeah, Facebook started doing this on pages because how many companies depend on the pages? Uh, right. Or, you know, but it's when you Twitter create that walled like that. garden that like walls off the app entirely, where it's like, no, you can't log in unless you give us money. Mm-hmm. That's when you create a problem. People at least have to get their hands on it, get the experience of it. Uh, a lot of services I use, Hootsuite, you can have like five of your networks connected and then you have to start paying. I, as many you know, accounts that I handle over how many platforms, six, five or six dollars a month, whatever it is, is worth it to me. Uh, Evernote, actually I dropped down from Evernote uh, from the five dollar model because I realized I wasn't really uplo- uploading that much to it. Uh, FreshBooks is like free for like three, uh, three clients. Um, but then again, that's something eventually I grew enough that, you know, you start paying for it, you know, um, it, it, it's smart cause it gets people, it gets people hooked. It's your first one's free or your first, so many megabytes are free Dropbox. And, and, and a lot of these services are really paying off for it. Yeah. Right. A lot I of think that this, is, um, this is something that people haven't, that people keep talking about. They're like, Oh no, 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 no. Things on the internet need to be free. No, they yeah. don't. No, no. It's no, just like don't. anything else. If you can charge money for it, you should charge money. They for need it. to be free enough. Yeah. Right. It needs to be free to a point, And yeah. then now you need to start charging money for it. Don't like, I think everybody learned the dot com bust that you can't have a free product and expect to make money. It's just not how that, that's not how that works. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You need to have a monetary a way to make money. You need to have a monetary plan for your business. And Twitter, for the longest time, didn't have one. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until they said, well, crap, well, I think we're just going to have to put ads in. I think if they said, okay, we're going to put ads in, everybody scream right now. Or if you don't want to see those ads, you can just pay us two bucks for your account. Exactly. Give would, us an option. Two bucks a month account. I would be paying four dollars a month, no problem. Exactly. Exactly. So There's a um, there's an anecdote in the, in the, in the free book, but it it's like one of the earliest examples of why this works. And it was uh, the guy who invented uh, Jello, like gelatin Jello. Uh, he couldn't get anybody to buy it. Like, there, he was basically doing like the, the hop out of a car, drive town to town, and get like try to convince shop owners that they needed this stuff so that people would buy it. Nobody was interested because it sounded like a weird thing. They couldn't figure out how they were going to use it because it was the first uh, like box gelatin type thing that you would sort of like put into recipes. And you know, when this stuff first came out, it was more like something you would use in other foods. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to chat out on some cherry jello. It didn't work that way. So it got to the point where. This company that he had put like years of his life into, he offered to sell it to some other guy for like 30 cents. 
he was like, dude, give me a buck right now. It's yours. I'm just going to walk away from this thing. The guy said no. It was that bad. So what he did was you're not allowed to pedal product door to door, but instead he went to, he started canvassing neighborhoods with recipes that involved Jello. He would just like knock on the door. Can I talk to the lady of the household? Here's a fantastic recipe for something. And it involves this Jello product that you've never heard of before. And he would just try to like interest them in it. And then after talking to like a hundred housewives, he would then go to the local supermarket and say, I just talked to X amount of people and they're going to want to come here for this thing. So we just handed out these recipe books for free and convinced people that they needed Jello. And then they went and they spent the three cents or whatever on a box of Jello. And now Jello is this multi billion dollar thing that's a household name around the world. And Bill Cosby. Yes. Bill Cosby. <laughs> yes. What? Yes. Did, I t- did I bring it down? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so uh, let's get into, uh, Frank, you got some stuff you submitted here. Uh, let's talk about first this uh, iPhone case uh, <laughs> that you submitted. Um, the headline on this is the iPhone case is a 650,000 volt stun gun. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, the, I saw this story the other day. Um, but yeah, it's it's basically the iPhone sits in the in the stun gun case, and you can. It's called the use, yellow jacket. Yeah, and it you, you can basically you know stun gun somebody with it because they figure you're going to have your phone on you at all times. That makes the, the stun gun that's best for you is the one that's on you all the time. Just like a camera, go, except right? this one give this one, you know, detains people. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Right? Are you required to stun yourself with it or, uh, before you receive it? Well, that uh, the it? guy who invented it um, said he uh, he had to. He's like, oh, oh, well, I made it, and I'm a police. Or he was a former army guy or a former police officer. I can't remember which. It's a thick case. <laughs> and he said, uh, I figured I had to try it on myself. And he said it. Um, let's just say it works really well. <laughs> Here's a guy. Wait, wait. They got this TV, this ad here, and it looks like this guy just sitting on his couch with his phone. Somebody's there. Boom. <laughs> what the, this is this is this is a heavy ad. I can, yeah. uh, <laughs> I can see that going horribly. By the way, in, in case you guys can't picture this happening. Don't leave it out at parties. <laughs> oh yeah, some Trump yeah. guy's gonna be like, "Dude, you should tase me! Come on, man, tase me!" Tase Come me, on. bro. I'm gonna tell you me. from firsthand experience. If you go to a party and you walk in a room, and there is a taser anywhere in eyesight, just leave the room. It's the safest thing you can do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just things where they're like, "Oh, you know, that's a sweet like bowling trophy you have." Oh, hey, like you see a Wii, and you're like, "Oh, we should play a Wii." Oh, <laughs> there's a half-assembled taser on top of your TV. Who wants to go? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. This is a fantastic idea, right? <laughs> Who, who's like, All right, I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Uh, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Here's, here's, uh, here's a regular this, iPhone though. case, by the way. And I'm guessing that the other one sticks out about this far. Oh, it does. Back. Actually, I had a picture yeah. up, and it's like twice yeah, as a great thick. side profile shot. It's thick. And there's like... Two not two like things <laughs> to uh, jab you with two little inconspicuous in- nubs on top. Yeah, yeah, well, actually, here it is. Here it is, right here. Uh, it was actually under the video. That's the thickness of it, right there. So you can see the phone. So the phone ends about here. How much here. does this cost? You got a nice little cover. Uh, retails for only one hundred twenty-five dollars after it's produced, but can be pre-ordered through Indiegogo. So this is actually a Kickstarter that's going on right now. Let's see how far well, they it's are. It's an Indiegogo. It's an it's an indie goer, goer, go goer. So this, listen, of, this, the uh, case that I have in my hand is thirty bucks. So for uh, that that ninety dollars, like it hurt somebody. That that video game awesome. thing. What was that? that uh, like all the records for for uh, Kickstarter. The ooh yeah, yeah, the ooh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We well we talked about it a little bit last week. All right. Did we talk about the records though? No. Uh, well, it was the first day when we were talking about it. It was already like. 1.5 million. Yeah, it, it broke yeah, 1.5 the first. Uh, I got the thing. Okay, so uh, they're holding the record for uh, 
fastest to a million dollars at eight hours and 22 minutes. Jeez. The one after that is Double Fine Adventure, which I never heard of, and that took 17 hours and 30 minutes. And then, uh, as of the writing of this blog post, which was July 11th, they were holding a record at 2.589 million, and they're now at 5.01. With 22 million. days to go. Oh, they've yeah, already announced that go. they're not doing any, like, they're not expecting any outside funding after this. No. Because of how much they've raised. They're, they're not, done. Yeah. They're done. They're like, we can do whatever we want with this thing. So. Uh, I would like to know. Um, do you guys remember the iPhone watch? Yeah, like well, like the iPod that one. Was, I thought that was the last one that was like crazy fast to a million. I, yeah, apparently yeah. that has now been broken. Yeah, and, and there's been a few of these. So, um, yeah. And, and for those who don't know, maybe didn't listen last year or last week, and uh, uh, or uh, or any other news that's been talking about it. This is basically they took a they took Android, uh, made a console out of it, uh, and, and they're going to sell for about a hundred dollars. And it, it, yeah, I guess they can port uh, Android games pretty easily over it. I think a lot of them are going to be very interested in porting to it after it's seeing how many people have one. We were talking last year how many people already had this. Like We're talking like 10,000 at the time, I think. And, I'm uh, curious uh, how robust the hardware they're putting it on. Uh, I get that first in a second here. But there is now over 33,000 of these things that will be in people's hands when this thing releases. Assuming it actually releases. Well, I would hope so at this point. Wow. Mm. Um, hey, so, I, um, well, I just looked back at the, the iPhone watch. Yeah. It had, uh, it raised, of the $100,000 goal, it raised $10.2 million. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope they got their watch. Uh, Rob, to answer your question, uh, on their pa- according to their page, it's a Tegra 3 quad-core processor, gig of RAM, 8 gigabytes of internal flash storage, HDMI connection to the TV with support for 1080p. Uh, Wi-Fi, BGNN, Bluetooth 4.0, USB 2.0, a wireless controller with standard controls, uh, which includes a we talked about a pad on top of it too. Is for, there um is there a form factor like how big is it physically? I think it's pretty small. Uh, I think they have a picture here. Is it like Apple TV sized? I think it is. Or? I really I think it is because it was just a, like this little box. Like remember those little nubbin things that we saw with the uh, Vizio. Like, I feel like they're going to be that size. Oh, uh, like one of those little... Hmm. Yeah. Because like, I'm thinking, like, like so... Like that big, right? The, uh... So I've been joking about my Raspberry Pi a lot recently. And one of the reasons, like, I got a Raspberry Pi is because there's a lot of devices that I design and build that need small computers to run them. But at the very least, they need to be able to push, like, HD content over HDMI. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, for thirty bucks, you get a Raspberry Pi. If for a hundred bucks, I get something that runs Android, which means it has a video player and an OS that I can hack. Yeah, like, there's a lot more to come out of the OEA than just and they are in, video games. they're completely encouraging yeah, uh, the, the hacking ability with it too. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah they're like, yeah, please hack oh, this thing. Rob's ordering like eight hundred of them. <laughs> are you gonna make I think this? I'm gonna have to buy one. You gotta make when a smiley that, face with the them. delivery on this? Uh, uh, next year. Uh, March March is the final delivery. And actually, here's... Well, I guess this is them making the controller. Um, and, we, and we talked about this from the guy that did the EPC. They actually showed a little bit of it on here, too. So, I don't know. I've mostly seen the, the controller at this point. Oh, interesting. So, well, we'll see. But, yeah. I, I, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's definitely one... And, and also, another Kickstarter has been going on at the same time is this, like, iPhone dock that will let you plug in the actually uh, custom-made, like, NES, 8-bit NES-type controllers to just hook your iPhone up to your TV and certain games. Like, I guess they got a list of, like, kind of 8-bit-themed games that are uh, already available for it. Chachi, this has been on your radar, right? What? The, uh, the thing I just described. No. Okay. <laughs> No, okay. But that one's a, that one's for like one hundred and twenty five dollars. But it's just basically a dock that connects the controllers that interfaces. Um, so I think that's this completely killed the uh, the wind out of their sales at this point. But like I say I already got deals with mine, uh, Minecraft and uh, Twitch TV to deliver content. Uh, so uh, this is this is going to be interesting. I, I don't think it's going to be any kind of Microsoft beater or anything like that. But it'll be it, it might be another player. At some point here, so, anyways, um, so I understand some people got some new Android stuff. 
amongst us. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, Frank, I know you updated your, uh, forgive me, which, which phone do you have there? Galaxy Nexus. Right there is my jelly bean. Uh, <laughs> there he is. Yeah, he sends me this picture with his uh, of his system info. Oh, there's your mobile number. No, no I said <laughs> Galaxy Nexus. Never mind. No, <laughs> I'm no, putting my that number on 4 right now. Uh, but uh, so so, uh, what do you think of it so far? Uh, excellent. The um, the thing that I really wasn't expecting to see as much, and it's not as in your face as what they made it out to be, but you do notice it, is the whole Project Butter thing. Because okay. the transitions are much smoother now. And uh, can it, I can I jump in here, Frank? Go for it. Let me let me help let me help everybody get to let me let me just baseline this. I've been using the iPhone since the iPhone 3GS, iOS three. It's it's on, on like full blown iOS six level smoothness. It is literally butter. That is not a joke. I am I am so incredibly happy with this, by the way. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I've I I had remember uh, let me take you guys back real quick. Remember when I had my uh my little LG Android phone mm-hmm. for like mm-hmm. a week? Mm-hmm. I hated it. I hated it so much because it was jerky, there was no design. It, it, like thought through at all. Um, applications were terrible. They didn't look very good. Nobody really put any thought into anything, and it just seemed like kind of just cludged together. And you have and you have an OS and you have applications. Um, they really, really did a nice job here. This is a full fledged. Um, I, I haven't found an app yet that I can't that I had on my iPhone that I don't have on one here, and that don't look either a exactly the same or b look nicely designed. They are all dead on, and I, I like the fact that there are the software buttons down here. I thought I was going to hate them. I don't. Um, mostly because they all do what they do. They do the exact same thing, regardless of what application you are in. These buttons don't matter. Just like the iPhone home button, nice. Um, which I was a very, I was very nervous about that. Um, I spent a lot of, um, I spent a lot of time with uh, with my LG, just just being mad at the buttons because they didn't do what they would normally do. Like the back button didn't go back the way I thought the back button should go. Um, these are more application-based buttons. In two, they were they were application buttons. In two, in here, they're system-level buttons. That is a big, big difference um, that most people don't think about. Um, I, I did play with uh, uh, the Google Now. Um, I'm playing with that a lot. It's I think it's excellent. Did you see the um, the thing where if you hold down on the home button and then swipe up, that it goes to Google now? Yes, love that. I didn't Definitely. notice that until I did it on accident today. I was like, oh, oh, wait, there, the uh, other way, got it. And then it goes into Google now. Nice. Um, One of the other nice things is from the lock screen uh, with just basic ice cream sandwich. It's swipe right to unlock, swipe left to go into the camera. Uh, yes. They've added swipe up to go straight into Google Now. Yeah, so, so it's yeah, that's right a on great shortcut left to have just from the lock screen. Now. Um, random thing I enjoy, uh, and I don't know why, um, are the uh, getting the notification panel to slide down. And I'm holding it back here for a reason because I don't want you to see what I have there. <laughs> Uh, but you can slide the whole notification panel down. I no, I never liked the fact that I, like my notifications were just hanging out there in the in iOS. That like, oh hey, my phone is locked, and I have my phone is locked, and here's all my notifications. They're all like right there, sitting in front of. Aren't there everything. aren't there levels of security that you can make sure that doesn't happen though? Yeah. Um, 
I, I but I still wanted to see that there was a notification there. Yeah. I don't yeah. I think they only did they if you put something there, it doesn't allow you to block the text that's in it. Okay. Um, with this, it all hides it up in the notification panel. All the stuff is in that panel, regardless of where you are on the OS. Lock screen, application, homepage, whatever. Um, and while we're talking about the notification panel, the one of the big improvements uh, that they were talking about at the presser for Jelly Bean was the expandable notifications, which I wasn't home at all today. And I was getting emails about doing this show, doing Let's Play, and just other things, and just being able to expand, just read real quick, and then swipe it away, all from the notification menu. It's where are you? Where are you doing that at? Help me out here. <laughs> so if you go into the notification <laughs> panel, I just like I have an email here. Okay. Um, but take take both thumbs, uh, put them both on the notification, and go out, and then. Oh, go. hey now. <laughs> How about that? Mind blown. Yeah. It's amazing. Same thing with pictures. You get a text message with a picture. Well, text messages in general. I think uh, Google Talk notifications do that. Uh, I know that Yahoo does not. Uh, because my Yahoo Mail app does not have that capability. But my Gmail does. Um, I'd have to get an email on my... Um, I have my work email on here, too. I'll have to get that. The one thing, though, that um, I have to come to grips with is the size of the device... Uh, this is a very large phone. <laughs> it, it's not <laughs> Galaxy Note sized, is it? Uh, uh, just shy. <laughs> this yeah, is four yeah it, five. it's not that big of a difference between the two. Yeah. But when you compare it to an iPhone? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, they that's are a not, huge comparison. They are not one of the same. <laughs> um, width wise, either. I don't think uh, I want a phone that big. I seriously don't. I, I was kind of nervous about how it would be. My big thing is, I. I watch a lot of Netflix on there, and mm. I just, I don't know, I'm just a, like, I just want the biggest screen possible. That's why I have the 50-inch plasma downstairs. Yeah, That's yeah. Why, but it, you know, to me, anytime I look at a computer, I look to see what's the biggest screen I can get on the computer. Mm. But it it was big because I went from a, uh, a Droid Incredible, which I believe is a 4.0-inch screen, mm -hmm. to the Galaxy Nexus 4.65-inch uh, screen. And it definitely was noticeable going to that, but it's, for me, it's not really anything that's uncomfortable. The only time where I'm not uh, really happy with how big it is, is whenever I'm trying to dial one-handed, and I need to reach either the one, the four, or the seven. That can be a little See, annoying at times, but other than that, it's, I don't know, it just kind of fits nicely in my hand. I don't yeah, know. yeah I, I'll say this, I, I use my phone left-handed, so I think I mean, I can get to, I don't know how to turn it so that you can see that I can, in fact, dial that. There we go. We'll, we'll go that way, I guess. I mean, I can get over here to to the one. But, I, I mean, it's it's definitely a much wider phone than I'm used to. Mm -hmm. And thus, you know, I, I've had issues where I, I have to kind of do this with my pinky to hold the bottom because I want to like use two hands on it and if I hold it like this like I would normally hold my iPhone it it's it's difficult to get up there so I kind of have to like cradle it with with my pinky in order to get to all of the other things I mean it's a very large phone and the screen is actually quite nice I'm not putting it on the retina display level no. it's like a not like one teeny little notch below it <laughs> but it's like right there it's still nice and to be clear you, you did get the uh, Galaxy like the unlocked one here on uh, Google Play right Yes, uh, notice the only things that are on the back of that device are Google and Samsung. That is yeah, I hate you for having that back plate. Uh, Google, yeah, this is this is straight from Google. When it came to me, it came with uh, 404, and I was able to go into About Phone and hit System Update, and there was Jelly Bean ready to go. Nice, nice. Uh, this is a direct from Google Phone. The only thing I had to do... Um, was slide and by the way, just in case you nice uh, people are wondering, because I know you are, because I know. So, I, a friend of mine wanted to get one, and he wasn't sure about it. That is my iPhone's micro SIM in a regular SIM slot. It's a okay. Really? Yep. That's, that's you just have to make sure you get it right. That's all. Uh, because the, the the size of the contact yeah did change. 
It's, it's only the surrounding plastic. Huh. So you can slot micro sim in there. I mean, there it is, right, right, right there. And, and iDevices devices are the are the only ones with micro sim so far, right? Uh, I think there's some other devices, but uh, of the major players, the iPhone's the big one that uses it. Hmm. Um, I will say this: the back plate feels so incredibly chintzy because it's it just plastic. That's been, I mean, that's this been is... a complaint since it came out. Actually, whenever I went to Verizon to get mine, um, the day after it came out, I went there and they had this just. Like they had it in an otter box. They had it. They had the otter box tethered to the counter. They had the phone itself tethered to the counter. And I asked them, like, why is this giant mess surrounding this? And they said, we can't just attach our normal security thing to the back plate because it's just too cheap. Yeah, yeah literally. Here, yeah. I'll, I, I have it. I have it removed. So it is just a tank and little piece of of very bendy plastic with yes. some very. Very small little clips that it barely hold on. I mean, it's that's that's all this is. So it's um, kind of chintzy. Um, the unlock version, no micro SD slot. This is 16 gigs, and it is staying there. Huh. Um, well, no, that's that my battery too. has the. I don't uh, have the SD I don't know slot. If you that. Uh, mine did come with 32 gigs, though. Yeah, the Verizon one comes with 32. The the uh, ATT one doesn't. Also, I don't know if you can read that. And f- judging by my feed, you can't. Um, the the near field communication goes through the battery. Huh. Yep. So yeah, I've, I've used that at Sheets a few times to pay for stuff. And is it cool? Yeah. Is, it, is it neat? You just I have to sign up for it so Google gives me ten dollars. <laughs> Uh, you might get as fifteen. As you got it for Google Wallet. Um, they well, actually, no. I had, a, I had a five dollar credit for whenever Wallet went down before they, um, like, it went down whenever they found out that there were issues with people who did a full root on their phone, and um, it went down for like a week whenever that happened. So they sent a five dollar apologetic, um, or apologetic credit. So hmm. yeah, you. I don't know. You might be able to get that extra five dollars there too. That's that. That's the now. You've rooted your device, right, Frank? Yeah, and so, I forgot to clear sixteen dollars out of my Google Wallet. So, uh, yeah. So I'm probably going to see about getting a tablet that has an NFC chip, and then just te- uh, just setting up the uh, wireless hotspot on my phone and trying to pay with a tablet at Sheets at some point, which will be amusing. <laughs> that, does, that seems a little too difficult for just going to Sheets to get an MTO. Uh, but <laughs> I, I thought about turning on my. Uh, because right in, if you go into networks, there's tethering and portable hotspot. I've thought about turning it on, and then I remember that I don't want to incur AT and T's wrath. I kind of have a really <laughs> nice account with them right now. I don't want to mess that up. Yeah, <laughs> I'll never get it back. Exactly. Um, exactly. But yeah, they. They. I mean, it has. I I was on it quite a bit today. I had I took some phone calls on it today, and, and I was at like. 50% battery at around 2 o'clock today. I leave it whenever I'm in my car and I and I drive a lot for my job so whenever I'm in my car I just plug it in because it's right there. So I might as well just plug it in. Um, so from like 8.30, 8.45 until 2 in the afternoon I used like half my battery. It's not bad. Not bad. That's, like that's lot, one of the but... things I've noticed and I'm not sure um, if it's just uh, going from ICS to Jelly Bean for me, but my battery life is greatly improved. Now, also, since I did go the ri- the, uh, the root method, I did install the battery calibration app, and I did run that. The first day after I ran that, I got 10 and a half hours out of my battery, which had previously uh, seen six and a half at its tops. That's not bad. No. That's why I had to and go... Even, even today, it went for eight hours before it died, so... That's why I had to go and get in an extended battery. It was the best purchase I've made. Yeah, that was that Mophie for my back when I had the iPhone three yeah, GS was like the best thing when we went to like Comic Con. I don't. So, I mean, I don't have to charge my battery for although, probably a day and a although half. Although, look now. how much thicker that thing is. Well, yeah. I don't know if you showed it off. Well, on yeah, here. no, yeah, it a- is. It is thicker. Yeah, but I mean, that's. 32 hours that I don't have to charge my phone. Nice, nice. And you'll probably see me. I'm probably, if we go back to New York Comic Con, I'm probably going to be getting an Armofi again just to get through those days. 
So, yeah. Um, all right. What else we got here? Uh, I saw you, Frank. I just caught this uh, while we were setting up. Uh, it looks like you shared on with us on Google Plus about uh, uh, the Nexus Q getting hacked. Yes. Um, the Cyanogen mod team, which uh, for those who aren't familiar, they're one of the uh, one of the top developers for custom ROMs. Uh, they have their uh, their namesake uh, series, Cyanogen mod, uh, and the um, they put Cyanogen mod nine onto a queue, which is basically a fully functional, um, full access ice cream sandwich version of their ROM. Thanks. Now, there were still a whole lot of bugs with it. They weren't really able to do too much with it. But since the hardware in the queue is basically the same as that that's in the Nexus, it just kind of fell right in. So one of the things, like, as soon as I saw that, I started thinking along the lines of having that kind of computer that you can just, like, to have the Tony Stark Jarvis computer just to be able to kind of have that, because you could set that up then um, with the uh, leap sensor, which that's what I was asking you and Rob on Twitter about that. I couldn't remember the name. It was that leap sensor. Uh, to have one of those in, or to go with a Kinect uh, to work that hardware to work with it, you could have a fully functioning uh, computer that way. Hmm. So I don't know. I, I think that the fact that they're able to get that onto the queue, uh, that's going to open it up and give it a lot more possibility and maybe make it worth the price. It all depends on um, what they're able to do with it, though. And it looks like here's a video of them booting it up here on uh, off of Mobile Magazine's website. So I'll just give you an idea. And there's, there it is. Oh, this is the first I've seen the glowiness, the glow circle thing on the queue. Yeah, that, that is one of the uh, other things that I noticed. And it also gave you, like, a really good idea of the size, just seeing it on someone's desk. Yeah, yeah, because you don't know too many people that are picking this up. Yeah. Mostly developers trying to see what the hell they can do with it right now. So, yeah, I mean, but, e even people that have gone it that, that aren't developers are like, well, I got it to play my music. Now what? So, seems to be the general thing with it. But that's pretty cool. Hopefully you get something out of that and... Uh, you know, I think initially you'd hope it'd be something like what that Ouya is, but uh, I think Ouya is going to eat their lunch on this thing. Yeah. So. And it's like I told you whenever it was first announced. I really want to buy one, but I just can't justify it for anything, especially yep. for the price. Like it, it, its native feature with the music playing is nice, but I don't know, not not for that price. And I think expanding it out that way, mm -hmm. I think that that's what's going to make it start to sell. Yeah. All right. Uh, Rob, I want to get to that one you were uh, uh, talking about before the show here. Tell me what's going on in Yahoo. It exists. Oh, we're actually going to talk about that? Yeah, why not? You threw it out there. Uh, I did, and now I don't have anything open for it. There's a new CEO. There is a new CEO at, um, at Yahoo. And her name totally escapes me right Marissa now. Marissa Meyer. So give me one second. Is it, Mar is it Marissa, Marissa Meyer? Marissa Meyer yes. uh, from uh, from Google. Um, Who is also been pregnant. paying attention to like the achievements out of Google for the last uh, uh, seven years, I think. She was vice president she of search products, products and user experience at Google, and was one of those people that they talked about all the time because she had accomplished so much while she was there. And uh, she resigned from Google uh, yesterday and said that she was going to take over as CEO of Yahoo, oh, wow. which is the story. So this is the first person that Yahoo has taken in as a CEO that actually kind of sort of makes sense. It's just sort of funny that Yahoo is still like this can that we're, they're like, Silicon Valley is still kicking Yahoo down the road, hoping that it doesn't get stuck in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> and uh, Flickr stills little thing, right? You know, right, right, people right. still sort of get their news from Yahoo sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, they have a lot of properties too. Yeah, Yahoo has a lot of properties. We, this is the problem: is that we we have tech ADD and we move on very very quickly. There are still an absurd number of people who see Yahoo every single day. There are, there are yeah, an absurd be... number, and they. I think they need to they need to take a look at this. Also, there was a word that the people who uh, the whole reason that Marissa Meyer actually left Google was that um, 
she had changed positions from the person in charge of search and UI to like local search. And uh, I think a lot of people felt that it was a demotion for her. Mm-hmm. And that they had said, okay, well, we've got what we need out of you. No, good, we're all on now. And uh, she was Google's first female engineer. Uh, she was like their 60th employee or something like that. She was one of the early ones. Um, and had worked her way up and accomplished a great deal of Google. And I, I agree. But um, I, it's it's the Yahoo CEO post. Yeah. yeah. I was hoping yeah. that yeah. there's no forgery of resumes or <laughs> anything of that nature. And that, you know, she does something well. And I hope, I hope she brings Yahoo back. I really do. I really hope that Yahoo can come back and be, you know, Yahoo. And hopefully um, she can work with what's there because, I mean, a, a lot of the word is that it's it's not just the CEO position. It's the structure is, is a lot of the problem, too. Yeah, so. and I, I, I also heard, I saw this the other day and I, when, when it was announced, and I, I kind of chuckled at it and moved on, was that this is similar to the... Um, uh, the Elop, I forget what his first name is. Martin, I want to say Martin. Elop, the guy who went from Microsoft to Nokia. Yeah, yeah. I, and, I'm and how, say I was like a spy move. <laughs> like this guy came in as CEO, and like within six months, they were partnering with Microsoft and dropping everything they did. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was the famous burning platform. Stephen uh, Elop. Stephen Elop. Yeah, sorry, Martin Elop, if you're a real person. I'm sorry. <laughs> and not involved. Equated in- you with Steve Elop. <laughs> and, and not involved uh, in... Uh, yeah, they, I, I honestly think that if they... Um, I hope that it's not one of those, like, you know, she's going inside of Yahoo to figure out what it's really worth and if Google can make a play for it. I really hope that's not it. I hope she's actually there to do something cool and turn Yahoo around because they have made a whole lot of terrible, terrible, terrible decisions lately. Yeah, yeah. Um, Delicious. Um, oh, no, that's still alive. <laughs> Is it still alive? They were, I thought they were selling it off. For, well, they sold it. They sold right. it. Somebody brought it back. I, but it's more that they they get something like that and they don't do anything with. It. That's been a long time complaint. Flickr. What's been new with Flickr in the last five years? Um, you know, versus when they bought it, uh, they're just just not doing anything with these things. So, but their content's apparently doing pretty good. No, actually, no, because they just had a bunch of layoffs. Yeah, oh, they did. They killed. Uh... Who's getting a call? That's me. Yeah, I think there he is. Sorry about they that. Killed, there was some uh, Yahoo Sports thing they shut down. They've been shutting down a lot. So. Yeah, they shut down uh, part of Rivals, I think. Rivals, yeah. Cause we, have, we have friends who were part of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, and it was true because the, the presentation at PodCamp last year, like I didn't realize what all went into what they were doing with stuff like Rivals. Um, but And the state, <laughs> just months later, it went it went down the tubes just from the sound of it. So, um, But... You know, it goes to show. So they're not, they're not even a search company. They got Bing for their results. So. Uh, Yahoo still gets 2.2 billion searches. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Bing is at 2.7 billion searches, and Google was number one with 11.4 billion searches. There's a reason you Google stuff and not Bing or Yahoo stuff. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's true. But at the same time, 2.2 billion users is, or 2.2 billion searches is still a crap load of traffic. There, there's no reason for them not to make money. I mean, it's not we're not disappointing because they're not making as much money as Google. You know, it's just there's there's some other stuff going on there. So, they do, they're, they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're, there's enough there, hopefully, to work with. And maybe we'll have some competition for Google, uh, which will push them. Which is like we want to see in the cell phone markets. Like, I'm excited for the also, Nexus. You know. Did you guys miss? The, I don't remember this in any of the podcasts I've listened to in the last month, so apparently we missed this. Um, apparently, Gmail just got past Hotmail to become the world's largest email service. Just, I, I believe like that. just now. I believe that. You know how many people yeah. still have a Yahoo account? How many people still have an AOL account? Um, I know. Hotmail I know someone announced who uses a fifteen-year anniversary in July of last year that has three hundred sixty-one million unique right. users per month. It still blows my mind. Yeah, I think you, go, you guys both made the same point there at the same time. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, well, especially like if I work with like you know with a company with a older set of 
you know, people, I, I see Yahoo's, I see AOL's, I see Hotmail's. So it, it's, it's all out there. Yeah, yeah. 425 yeah, million it, monthly it, active users. You have to think, it's, it's just like uh, the thing with Yahoo. I mean, the older people are the same people that were like, I have the same TV for 20 years. Why am I going to change my front page? Right. You know? Um, people hate that Facebook's getting changed. People don't. People don't like change. A lot of people have real big reservations against change, and if they got hooked on the Yahoo early days, they're just riding the Yahoo wave, and it's 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 getting the converts is the, is the big thing at this point. They got a lot uh, of uh, apparently Comscore disagrees with Google's little announcement of 425 million users, and says, and this is their latest numbers for May that they Hotmail is still number one with 325 million unique visitors, Yahoo is number two with 298 million users, and Gmail is at number three with 289 million users, and that was in May. So mm. I want to take all these numbers for what they're worth. I want to touch on one more thing. It, 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 we're, we're probably going to touch on this a, a bit more in depth uh, later tonight because of the subject matter that this goes along with. Uh, but hey, guys, are you touting? Oh, what, uh, are we are we going to use that verb? We might as well since Rob has the uh, helmet on tonight. <coughs> no. You know. I got a window up. Uh, so okay, so tout.com, it's we've seen this before. I think I had an app called 12 Seconds that did this exact same thing, but without the uh, decent social media kind of tools to it. Sorry, Chachi, had you turn down there for a bit. Um, it's okay, it was a finger gesture. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but it, it's but basically, hand gesture. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I get a lot of hand gestures off camera during this. So, I mean, th- this is it. It's basically you take your phone or you're on your webcam, and you take a little. It limits you to 15 second videos. And uh, the, but the big thing from they got a lot of celebrities on there. There's Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, there's a lot of WWE guys, and there's a reason. Actually, they're all WWE guys except for Live with Kelly at the bottom here. Um, that's interesting. Uh, there was there's a reason for that. Uh, WWE bought a stake in this company. Thirteen point two million dollars in Series B funding. That is a lot of coin, kids. Exactly, a lot of coin. Exactly. So, World Wrestling Entertainment, hence, hence all you see there, Zack Ryder right there on the cover, uh, uh, on on the front image, and they are pushing the hell out of this. Uh, ever since SmackDown is the first I noticed this, uh, uh, their show on Friday nights. Um, they're going through and they're getting like, you know, three or four people talking about what, you know, they have the thousand, seven, thousand episode of Raw coming up this next Monday. So they have people tagging, you know, favorite Raw moments. And, and, and it's great because then you don't have people railing off forever and you can pick the best of them, I guess. Yeah, um, they, uh, in, in last night's episode, they took, uh, they had four of them. And there were four 15 second clips of like people's favorite moments. And I thought about that and I was like, Somebody had to watch a bunch of these in order to make sure that somebody wasn't like, oh, my favorite moment was the time that this dude beat up out of this guy. He was such a piece of... And they like they don't have to edit. They can't edit these things. No, no, they just pick so one. They, 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 I seriously think they're going through. They got one guy probably in the back looking at this thing. And they look at however many they can when they like... I, I imagine they're supposed to be all interactive next week. So they're going to put a question out at the beginning. And by the end of the first hour, this guy's going to swim through the thousands of hits this thing's getting. It, it started getting 500 errors uh, when they first started talking about it last night on the show. Uh, so they obviously, obviously got slammed. They, I think it was smart of them starting on the Friday night show that doesn't isn't as popular. They hit the pay per view on Sunday night. Obviously, not nearly as many people if you're paying forty five bucks for that thing. Uh, and then Raw's, Raw was the big test because that is you know probably arguably one of the you know uh, the highest rated cable programs week in week out. So that was uh, the big slam. Do you want some real numbers behind that sword? Uh, sh- sure. Uh, uh, Tout went from outside of the top 200 of the App Store to number 116 overall and from 37th to 6th in the free video and photo category immediately following Monday Night Raw. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, uh, at the time of writing, they're, they're at 128 and number 9, respectively. Uh, it was downloaded more than 30,000 times for iOS and Android during and after the show, and more than 400,000 people visited the app through Tout.com, mobile devices, and WWE.com. And more than a million tout posts were viewed during and after the show, while more than 12,000 updates and replies were posted by users. And people will continue to do that for their chance to get on TV with WWE. Mm-hmm. And it's a smart move in the long run. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. if you're at the moment, if you're not into wrestling, 
uh, you're a little bit over, you know, <laughs> overtaken. You're gonna get, if you if you go on there, you're just gonna see muscly dudes with no shirts on, and you're gonna be real, <laughs> you're, real confused. You're gonna be like, "What did I just get into? Uh, what, what is this website? And, and there, Why are there are people here. They're not wearing any clothing. And, and, and then, oh, I'm sorry, Josh. Go ahead. Stop turning me down. You're doing things over there. I my energy drink exploded in my bag. <laughs> so I turned it down so you could deal with that. I, I got up because I thought your one of your pets pissed on the couch and it turns out it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the same thing. But um, uh, <laughs> I'm telling you now that if you start an awesome cast, a mayhem show, or any other of your affiliation tout accounts, I'm boycotting it all. Are you? Yes. Are you? Because I, I was actually considering that last night when I we will not be on the couch. No, I'm on there. I I'm will on there. not be on the couch anymore. And I and 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 I'm thinking how do we use this because uh, you know wrestling fans obviously are going to be all over this thing. So let's let's uh go there. Um, I like the Google voice number. What's that? Instead of taking phone calls, you take touts and it's exactly. 15 seconds. Exactly. I don't have to worry about anybody taking the 3 minutes to try to get their point across. They're stuck with 15 seconds. I think you it's know a smart move. Which you means we're going to get 30 of them. <laughs> <laughs> but then you get to pick one, just like those guys on Monday Night Raw are going to be doing out there. Millions! Oh, Only so us. you're going to take the time out of your busy schedule to watch 30, 15 second touts to find out what which one's important? That's no different than the five three-minute voicemails that I had to go through this week. Uh, or last week, or the week before. There's no difference to that. Um, but anyways, it's interesting. Rob, what do you think of all this? Uh, <laughs> I just want Rob down. to slam the no. helmet right into the wall behind him. Just wham! <laughs> <laughs> I, I got just, nothing good to say. I would just like to point out that... Uh, AJ pointed this out Sunday during uh, a hangout, but this is the same service that Shaq tried to get off the ground by announcing his retirement on it. Really? And yep. That didn't help. That didn't. It, nobody yeah, cared. That was like two years ago or three years ago. Sha- Shaq announced his retirement. I remember going to this like tout.com. I was like, what, the, what is this? And it's just Shaq going, hey guys, uh, I'm not going to be on. I'm not playing basketball anymore. So I'm going to retire. Click. And that was it. And I was like, oh, Shaq retired. Cool. There's no, like, hour-long press conference of people asking questions. It's <laughs> him in his, like, kitchen. Just hey, saying, look, Rob's already on this. What? Oh, no, he looked like you. I only saw, like, his mouth. <laughs> and I think he's going to jump. Adorably, you can recognize me by my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all the time that we have this week. <laughs> exactly on that go- on that point. Look forward to our new town account for Awesome Cast and No Chachi on the couch next week. In the meantime, we are on Facebook. You think we're I'm on, kidding? We're on, you think I'm kidding? We are on Twitter. We are on uh, all that fun stuff. Um, so go check that out at Awesome Cast. Uh, uh, drop us a line at Comcast. Com- contact. Wow. wow. At Awesome Cast. Wow. We're at AwesomeCast.com. Uh, live here every Tuesday night at live.sorgatronmedia.com, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I just did like everything backwards, didn't I? Um, yep. go check out the Kickstarter, uh, what was it? SteelCityStartups.com. Uh, go check that out and support that, please. And there's a party next week for PodCamp. Yeah. There's a PodCamp party. Go to PodCampPittsburgh.com. It's the kickoff party. It's going to be down at the, uh, Round Corner Cantina, I believe. Yes. 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 Rob will be wearing the helmet to the party. I don't know about that. It's, it's going to be hot, probably. It probably will be hot. I think it's going to be outside. Uh, hey, heads up for those of you who go to the Round Corner Cantina. Uh, they have water um, coolers outside. So you just go get your own water. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Thanks, guys. Thanks, uh, Rob Dedicreta. He's at robjdlc.com. Oh, I have a, I have a thing. Yeah. That company that I that I that I do a thing with, yeah, yeah, we, we have an internet now. You have an an internet? Did you see that we have an internet now? No. Iontank dot com is now an actual thing, so you can sort of kind of vaguely vaguely guess and figure out what I do for a living. Oh, look at that! Yeah, uh, we got nice. an internet. Cool. There you go. Go uh, check it out. Uh, Iontank dot com. No. I want you to be etank.com so you could just have like the Mega Man E-Tank and then I could <laughs> go to that. 
there you go. get them and then replenish my energy. AJ's at virtualpotholes.com. Virtualpotholes.com. Uh, I blogged something the other day. Um, follow me <laughs> at AJ Koftik on Twitter, uh, where I talk about all of my nerdy things and my nerdy travels. And uh, I'll see you on the internet. Yeah. That way. And uh, Frank Genoeth, he's uh, over at insertcointobegin.com at Fuzzwad. Anything yep. else going on with you? Uh, nope, just uh, just got back from my mission trip to NASA to spread the good word of Insert Coin to Begin. And just getting back into the swing of things here in the States. Excellent. Chachi, also at insertcointobegin.com. And Unsung has a new episode where we're down at the Tunesium talking about Batman. I have many internet. Yes, you do. Yes. yes, you do. And I'm, of course, over at Sorgatron.com. My blog's going, my video blog's going well, although I got to edit a couple from the weekend still. Uh, so go check that out at Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com, and all other fun places you may find me. Um, yeah, that's it. It's the Awesome Cast. Thank you for our awesome uh, chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Hmm. It, uh, yeah, I, was, I was sitting here for a minute I'm like man is Sorg ever going to call me and then I realized that uh, Skype didn't log me in when I launched the application 15 months ago oh okay ba, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. what are you doing making random noises my hair is awesome pow just for a minute yeah. Okay, I have pictures. pictures. Just wear a helmet the whole time. I can do that. Do it. Hold on. Hold on. Don't do it. That was a bad idea. Get my helmet. Bad idea. <coughs> uh, uh, uh. A little bit of peeking. A little bit of peeking. Hey, remember that time Rob was going to shit on the walls and then Deborah did? He's going to what? It's- He's gonna well, I'll wait for Rob to put his headphones back in so I can talk that crap. <laughs> hey, Rob, remember that time you were going to paint some shit on your wall that never did? Paint what on my wall? Oh, what's the, the, the thing over there? Yeah. That, that was never supposed to be paint. That was supposed to be tape. It was just tape? That's it? Yeah, yeah. The point was not to make it, like, tape. It was to make it so, like, if I moved out or hated it, I just take the tape off. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yes, you should wear a helmet the entire time because I can't see him, but I assume you look special. He, no, 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 no! It's like a full-blown motorcycle helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not. He's ready anything. for this train wreck of a podcast, Rob De La Creta, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Suit up! Yeah, this is, uh, this is vintage. Is what this is. Oh, hey, I got a thing now. That's nice. No, oh, hey. Hey, Rob, what's the uh, latest version of iOS 5 for the iPhone 4S? The latest version of 5? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. I'm on so 6 something, 6 beta 2. Uh, oh, did you see beta 3 came out? Is 3 out? Yeah, what are we talking about today? And maybe I'm on the latest version of iOS 5. Uh, 5 is 5.1.1. Okay. I need to find that on... I need the full, like, IPSW to restore from. And because my phone already has 6, it doesn't download. Hmm. It goes...